Right, we've come to the end of this one now. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to just show you John, and he's going to show you how to connect up your Cat 6 and get your internet up and running, and then we're going to have a walk around, talk about what we've done, and we're going to give you a full breakdown of exactly how much to the penny this room has cost. Right, now we're going to talk about the internet. So, of course, this is a dedicated office. Now, you might be using your garden room as a family room or a gym or an office or just anything like that. And internet is life. You need internet. So, what we've got is... We've got this router. Um, John's going to turn it into an access point, um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. It's from Amazon. It's about 50 quid, I think it was. Um, we've used this kind before, haven't we, John? That's yeah. right. In the, yeah, so um, we're going to put it over here. This is where the desk is going to go. So this will sit on the desk at some point. Then she will have exactly the same Wi-Fi speed. Is that correct, John? Yeah as she would as if she was sat next to her house. Also, she's got ports on the back there where she can hardwire her laptop or computer or your Xbox or your Fire Stick TV, IPTV, if you're going down that road. Um, right, so this is the point there. Can I just have the, the module, John, and the plate? So this is just a single module plate there, and that, that pops in there like that, and then you, you can put your lead in there and then that lead will go in there. John's going to show you how to connect it up. He's going to show you what tools to use. He's going to talk about the cable and he's also going to show you how to configure this. Right, so I know a lot of people have said that because these, I mean, you've built this garden room, it's got foil insulation, so it's literally a foil box and your internet is pretty ca crappy in it. So you cannot get better than a hardwired, another router like that or running the Wi-Fi off it. So we've got Cat6 now, John. Cat5, Cat6, what's the difference, mate? Well, Cat6 will support up to 10 gigabits per second. Cat5 only supports 100 megabits. So that's the difference. But 10 gigabits is a lot faster than 100 megabits. Cost-wise, the cable it is not even worth worrying about. So go Cat6 and you sort of future proofing for yourself then, aren't you? Right, so John's going to connect up this module. Right, so tools I'm going to use. You don't need this, but this is a Cat6 stripper. It helps strip back the cable because sometimes if you use a Stanley knife, you can use a Stanley knife blade if you're really careful and you can pull it off that way, but you've got to be careful that you don't chop through the strands. So that's why I've got this tool. Tell us how much this stuff costs. Uh, well, this was pretty dear. This is it thing. an Apex It's an Apex, yeah, because you, you could get one way cheaper than I paid for this, but I got this, I know I'm going to be doing it an awful lot. Um, so that's why I got that. I'm going to use. This tool here, this is, well, I call it a croning tool. But That's what we've always called it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, to be honest, you can get these on Amazon for about nine ninety nine with some ends, a pair of these. You can get all the stuff for doing this job for about nine ninety nine, ten ninety nine. It will only work for so long, then break, but you're not up. What's it doing? It's, so it's pushing the cable in there. Now, you, some of you will be old enough to remember when you could get extension boxes for your telephone lines and used to run them all around the house. And you used to get a little white croning tool, didn't you? Yeah. And it just forced it in, and that kind of messed up quite quickly. But that actually cuts the cable off as it puts it in. But it, it'll show you. Well, they're, little, they're basically the little like razor blades in these. So when you press your cable in, they, they, they like slice the cable slightly. And that's how it makes its connection. And then this pair of scissors on here will chop the axis off. So first things first. Well, I'll give you a little tip as well. When I ran this cable, I didn't tack behind it so that I could do this. Look, you see how I can do this? And that's so that I can put it on and push all the slack back in the wall. So if in 30 years to come, we need to do it 50 times, which you never will have to do that. But if you do, then you've got loads of spare cable. So, but you can't tack it at the back, because if you put a tack at the back, you then can't push it back. Right, we'll get my Nipex tool, and I'm just going to do this. The blades are getting a bit knackered. But you can see that's done a fantastic job. It's not caught any of the cables inside, and it's done a great job. I mean, what I could show you with the uh, Stanley knife, but... Just do it this way for today. So inside this, you get this uh, in Cat 6, you don't get it in Cat 5. You do get this little piece of string. Uh, you get this plastic piece in the middle. Now, I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure that this is for strength and stops the strands from snapping and just supports the cable. But I'm going to chop it off. I, I think it helps stop it kinking and all, doesn't it? Uh, that as well. Although yeah. it does kink, doesn't it? Right, there you go. So we've got, we've basically got a brown, brown and white, green, green and white, blue, blue and white, orange, orange and white. So 
if we have a look at this here, I'll just get, can you see that, David? So, I mean, this is pretty straightforward nowadays. They never used to really label them up as good as this. So, basically, I'm going to put the matching corresponding cables in these numbers here. So, even if you don't know what you're doing, uh, you, you do know what you're doing now to put the numbers <laughs> in. But, I will say, there is some of them that don't come numbered up and they don't tell you. So, you can just Google it if you get stuck. You can just Google it and you can get the diagram and you'll know where to put them. Little tip with these, when you unwind them, can you see how they're all like bent? You see that, David? Yeah. So what I'm gonna do a couple of times, I'm just gonna go over, warm the cable up. Can you see how now it's gone nice and straight? It makes it easier for getting them in. So now I know in number one, I want the, uh, thanks to the guy, by the way, years ago, gave us a little tip on making the cables really short, but. I'm still not going to do it, because <laughs> <laughs> only because I don't mind doing it this way. I've done it this way for years, and in all fairness, I've never, ever, ever had any speed drops. I don't like that. Not even had a call back, have we? No. To any one of us jobs for the internet. So we've got a pair of scissors on these. I'm going to put them on the outside, that on the in, and then it's clipped. I don't know if you saw that, David, but that's just chopped the end off. And now we've got number one in, and we're going to repeat the process with all eight cables. Let me just get in now, you can go if you want, baby. You see cable drop. So there you go, so there, we've now got our orange and white and orange in, and it's as neat as that. I'm now gonna repeat the process and do all the rest of them. So what I forgot to say when I put the first couple of cables in, so you can see I've straightened these cables out. So now we're gonna finish off with blue and white in five and blue in number, number four. So I'll just get this in. If you put your finger on the back, you can grab this long end. That's why I left them pretty, and you can actually pull it. Can you see now it's actually grabbed into place? And then I can do the same with the blue. Give it a little pull and a little press with my finger. And they're actually, they're not croned in, but they're in, they're not gonna fall out. Otherwise, when you move this like this, they'll keep falling out. Sorry about these scissors, they're really old on this tool. I sometimes don't chop the cables straight away. And there you go. Now, you, you get a cable tie in the kit, which you do put in the back here. Where's the cable tie, John? The cable tie is somewhere in Disneyland. Um, but you should use the cable tie. Come back, David. The, the, <laughs> on, the only thing the cable tie actually does is, when we put pick this up now and bend it over, it just keeps, can you see that, David? It just keeps that out there, because if, if you let go now, it, this can lift up and pull your wires out. So what I'm going to do, knowing that I've lost it, I'm just going to just gently keep that held in there. But there you go, that's it. That's how to do that side. Nice and easy, and you can get the kits on Amazon, they're pretty cheap. Just put in... Uh, Cat 5, Cat 6, uh, Kit or something like that, and there's loads of them on Amazon. Right, so why have you not put the first plate on and why have you not put it back to the wall, Tommy? Because I'm not skilled enough to do that yet. No, I, it's because I'm going to test it all first, just in case one of the wires hasn't quite gone in properly. What you will find is when, when you get your kit, if you get one, you do also get a tester with it. Um, sometimes you have to re the cable again, like number five might show not connected. Um, but you're going to see this when we go in the house. They're not, the kit's not here, it's in the house when we test the cable. I'll show you what I mean there, and you might need to grow on it again. So I will reconstruct it once I know everything. Do you want to talk about. about this now? I've unwrapped it, John, just while we're here. Um, just basically PowerPoint, where you're going to connect into, and all the rest of the malarkey. Right, so we've chose this, I've chose this router because I like this router because it has a thing on it called access point and it's nice and easy to set up and it'll be easy for you to set up too. In the instructions it tells you to use the blue part. We can send you a link, we'll put a link in the description. Will you lay in for this? Yeah, we'll do, yeah. yeah. Um, so we plug it into the blue part, we plug the cable into here. The other side of the cable is going to go into here. I'm not going to plug it in now because I need it. It's going to go into there and that'll be the route route set up. We're then going to go in the house, I'm going to put it into the Virgin router, into one of the five ports. And basically, once I set this up into access point mode, you'll just put a password of your choice in when you're setting it up, and anybody can come in and log on to it, and it'll work, it won't conflict, I don't like it. Can, can I ask you, like, as well, John, just, you know the QR code, there's a QR code on the instructions, 
Have you done that before? Do you not yeah. need to? Is that helpful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what the, there's a QR code there to download the app, and there's also the a, app. The app. <laughs> Sorry, I, I realised the, the app. The app. Right. And there's a QR code, so you don't have to put the um, the number on the back of it to log on to it. If you scan this QR code here, your phone will automatically just connect to it without putting it in. But in all fairness you'll probably be changing yours. I'm not going to change this for customer so that it, she knows what it is because it's stuck on the bottom of here. But if you are doing it, you're probably going to customise. When I show you how to do it, when I'm setting it up, I'll show you how to customise your own password. Right, so now I'm going to show you how this tester works. Again, you should get one of these in your kit. Liam, I'll see if I can send you a link to a kit. Okay. That they can use it. You do get this in your kit. So on, on the end, you usually get two different ones. You can only put it in one that it fits. So you can't get it wrong. So I'm just going to show you how this works. This is the cable that comes with the router. But, so I'm going to show you on this. So if we plug it in. And just can you see them there, there? Can you see how we've got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what this is doing is it's testing either side of the cable. And checking that we've got a connection either side. So with that in mind, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to leave this cable in one side. I'm going to plug it into here. I'm going to leave that there and then we're going to go in the house now and I'm going to put the end on in the house and before I put it into the Virgin router I'm going to connect this up and check that we've got a connection from inside the office to the other side of the cable in the house otherwise you'll be trying to get your router going and it'll never work if you've not done a cable properly. This will tell you which number is not working so if you look at your numbers on the back of this what we talk about if number three is not working we can say oh three is orange and white or whatever and then we know which cable that we check in so we can maybe give it another chrome like i told you to do a bit ago right so that's the cat six i mean you remember from previous video we've run that under the floor we've buried it in the ground and then we've brought it out in the garden room just to where john's going to connect so that's going to come up now john's going to put a connector on there and he's going to connect it to the virgin router which we'll show you in a minute. I'm just going to break off this for a second. And I'm going to do a speed test. So the app I use is called, let me just see there, David. It's called Oakla Speed Test. You can get it for iPhone and you can get it for Android as well. So, but first of all, I need to connect to the Wi Fi. It does, you know, oh, well, gonna have shall to I show you mine? Looks like oh, Liam's doing it. Yeah, it I'll just swap you over to Liam there. So, what are we getting, Liam? Um, it's nearly 500, it's gone over 500 meg, so... Settling in about 500, 530, isn't yeah. it? So, what I'll... So, it's got 545 there as a download speed. And our upload is 50. Let's say 50. Well, so there, there's your results, 545. Let's screenshot that. There we go, right. So, when I've done this now, because I've hardwired it, when we go into the office and I test it again... As long as I'm stood quite next to the router, because the way Wi-Fi works, the further you go away, the, the less signal you'll get, less less speed. I'll get that self same speed, and that's why we always run it with a cable. Anyway, here's the other end of the Cat6 cable. So the other end is in the office. We've just crawled the cables into it, and I've got the other side of this tester on it, so that when I put the end on here, we can test it. So in your kit, you will probably get these as well, Sean Davey. You get these little rubbers here, which I'll just slide one over the cable here. Some people use these, some people don't. I'll show you what it's for in a minute, but you must slide it over your cable before you strip it back, because we are going to use it. I am using this tool here. I can put you the link in the description. I don't know if you can see this tool, but it also gives you the wiring, the way the wiring works as well. Can you see? Which is quite handy, but this one's pretty expensive. I don't know if the one you get in the kit will show you. But you do get one of these in the kit, but it's just not as good as this. This was about 60 quid. It was really expensive. Um, these, these, these here, what happens with these, when you push the cable in, it comes out of the other side like that. So you can make sure that you've not twisted them. We'll put link in for some of these as well. Um, but they are a bit more expensive. So if you're only doing it once, if you get the cheaper ones, just come here, Davey. What they do, you push the cable in and it stops there. And that's how they crimp like that but what can happen is if your eyesight in 10 and 10, 10 10 vision you can twist two of the cables and when you can pick together when your tester comes up you'll show it'll show like one to three and stuff like that whereas this one will push through the other side and i can check that i've not twisted them if i have pull it back out 
retwist them, push it back in. Show you in a minute. So we're going to do the same again. We're just going to strip the end of it. I'm going to leave them a little bit longer using this marvellous tool. You might be able to buy a cheaper version of this. If Liam reminds me, I will have a look on Amazon or something like that and see if you can get just a cheap one, which will do for a few times. But as I said before, if you go on the Facebook group, so I've got a self-build Facebook group, right? And then I've also got um, people that sell garden room stuff. So let's say you bought it, it's cost you 50 or 60 quid. You can put it on there. You're going to get 40 quid for it any day of the week, aren't you, John? Yeah. Second hand kit, yeah. easy, yeah? So mm. that's what you want to be doing. Uh, you know, I, I, I wish I had a hardwired every room in my house because Wi-Fi is crap, isn't it? I mean, you told me it didn't before I rendered. So if you're going to buy this kit, buy a drummer cable, get the internet everywhere in your house and then sell the kit on again. So no win. It's a win-win rather. So what I'm going to do again here, to, uh, I'm going to get all these cables, but I'm not going to do them all together. I'm going to do my orange and whites first because I know that, I mean, I haven't done this for ages, so I'm going to have to use this tool anyway to remember, but I always know we start off with oranges first. Um, and I'll do the pair as I go. So orange... I've pulled them again. It's so that when I get all the eight in my hand, I can give them all a good tug, chop them, and then I'm going to push them into here, and they're going to come out the other side. So this is the diagram I'm going to use here. Orange and white. Orange. I have to think about that then. Green. And then you use blue, blue and white, and then solid green, brown and white, and brown, and can I just ask you? You can get um, this information on the internet. Right, so I'm just going to ask you now. So, orange, orange and white is first, then orange. Yes. Is it that way, or um, is it that way? Right. So I always remember it by putting. You see the clip on the there. Uh, yeah. Always put that down. Yeah. And then we'll start with that order. Orange and white, orange. You can get it dead easy on the internet if you just go to Google, type Cat Five, Cat Six, connect connections. There's images there. So if you, you know, in on your crimping tool like mine, you can just find it on, on the internet dead easy. So we've got us orange and white. Orange, I'm now going to get my green set up. M leave these a little bit longer because you can pull them straight because you see how badly twisted they are. And then they don't want to push into this plug if they're all twisted. So that's why I'm leaving them a bit longer. Knowing that I'm only going to use the green and white now, I'm going to push the green out of the way. So again, look, I've twisted, look, as you can see, I've twisted my orange over my white there. So I want orange and white, orange, green and white. Now we're going to go to blue. So every now and then I'll just check my orientation. You can see how I'm pulling them now. And they look nice and tight together. So we, we know we've got his orange, orange and white, green and white, blue, blue and white. Now it should be green and we're almost done. It's a little bit of a tedious process, a lot easier with these plugs because in a minute when we plug it through you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Well, if you try it the old way, you might crimp one on and get a few crimps but you do get about 10 or 20 in the kit. How much more expensive are they than the other ones? No, they're, they're not much dearer to be honest Liam, but it's just, well, it's, well, even uh, if it's a 10 or all in, a 5 or all in, but if you're only doing it once, yeah. then you know, I mean, but... I suppose if you if you're following my video, not easier, paying like, somebody else yeah. to do it, then you're saving money there, aren't you? Yeah, because so I mean, you're going to pay a spark to come out and do this, aren't you? Yeah, you know yeah. I mean, that's I mean it, what's it? he going to charge? 150 quid? Yeah, he's going to. Yeah, so so I suppose you could buy the kit and then you've got it. So again, now this is where I've left them long, Dave. You see, so I can I'm pulling quite hard on these, giving them a wiggle so that I can get them as straight as possible. And now what I'm going to do just before I go, I'm going to have one more little final check. So I've got an orange and white. I've got an orange, green and white, blue, blue and white, green, brown and white, brown. Now I'm going to chop them down a little bit because they're too long. You can still leave them long, but they're just too long. So I'll chop them down, say, there. You can see now they're all nice and neat on end. Yeah. Now I'm going to push them with a clip down to the bottom. I want the orange starting first. Trying to hold them in position. Someone tells me these are going to... <laughs> they don't go in, pull them back. No, no, they do it. They do it, they'll go in a minute. You've got to just keep rubbing them with your hands and just go in. This is a flow connector I'm using. Let me just check it. <laughs> I think so. There you go, look. So, 
they, they, they can be, they were pretty stiff, that. Um, oh. Right, so basically you can see how they're stuck out the other side. So hopefully they've twisted, but hopefully they aren't as well. So now we're not going to crone it on and then test it and go, oh, it don't work. This is the idea of these good connectors. So we're going to test that we should have orange and white first. You can see I have got orange and white. I've got orange. You, you probably can't see it, but that is a green. Green, is that green? Yeah, green and white. Blue, blue and white, green, brown and white, brown. So I know now that when I crimp this, this connector will work. It won't be a waste of time. You'd have to use the other connectors to know what I mean now. Sometimes they just don't work because you've got well, to push yeah, them in. I guess you're looking through and trying you're to You're trying see to look through that little tiny bit there. So yeah. imagine these out there now. Now try see the, if they're in right. You yeah, can't see yeah, if one's yeah. twisted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there you go. So I'm going to use my uh, trusty crimpers. I've got a blade on one side. So that's going to chop these, these off when I put them through. It is a bit... Not working right well, to be honest. They're all a bit... I'll just pull these straight. Put it in. So, you see that, Davey? So I've got me pushed in the back. The wires around the front. And I was going to give it a quick crimp. And there you go. That ends on. Now, remember, we put this on the cable to start off with. It's got like a little ridge on the top. I mean, to most people, this will be common sense. So what you do is pull it over to the end. You push it over like that and there you go that cable's complete so now we're going to try the magic we're going to plug it into this again and check that we get all eight lights lighting up here we go hang on <laughs> Back in the ah. net. <laughs> Never done that before. So now we know that this cable is 100% working. So if, if for any reason the internet don't come on, it's a setting in the router or something like that, it's not this cable. So that's where, the... where do you want it putting it back of this router, John? Any one of them parts? Yeah. So what we're going to do, this, this we're going to plug it into any, any one of those parts. On some routers, you might have to read the instructions. You might have to plug it into a specific part. Not on Virgin router, we're just going to go into any. So that now sending signal into the office. We're now going to go into the office and we're going to plug the cable into the back of the router and we're going to set that back up. Right, I'm back in the office now. I'm going to put the socket back together now and knowing that the cable's all tested. Bearing in mind, I'm going to hold my finger on this one if you lose your cable tie because when I put it together, I don't want it to pull the cables out. Probably won't anyway, to be fair, but... Right, that's now ready to connect up the router. So, we're going to use the blue part on this version uh, if you buy this one. Do, you might have to read the manual to see which one it tells you to plug it in to get access point if that's the way you're going to go. I recommend it because for people who are not skilled on the internet, I don't like that. It's really easy for you to do. Your password is always on the bottom here with the serial number and everything like that. So you'll find all the information there. Right, so we need to download the app. The app, it will tell you which app you need. You get it on a barcode. You can QR. scan the code, QR code. QR code, should I say, on the QR code. It's either on the box or on the bottom of the router. This one is for the, uh, to log it on the Wi-Fi, which we might use in a minute. So I'm now gonna plug this into the first plate, plug down to the bottom. We've heard the click, so we know that's in nicely. I'm now going to put it Every now and then, when you do this, when you turn on the router, it'll actually be connected, but you still want to follow these stages that I do now, because it can still cause a conflict. So it's turned on, you can see we've got the power light on. Um, it'll take a couple of minutes now and it should all configure itself and it'll come on and it'll tell me if it's on the internet or not. This end light here will come on orange. If it stays orange, it's not connected to the internet. That's usually a cable problem. Um, but you know, I mean, you, what you've done, because you tested the white cable, yeah. you know that was good. Yeah. You've tested your other, so you know any issue now, it's not cable related. It's it? not cable related, yeah. So if you'd see that, Davey, now, I mean, I am going to jump onto the app in a minute, but you can see how it's gone green. That's actually working now without doing anything. I could just put that password in the bottom 
log on to it, but we're still going to go do another step to, to put it into proper access point mode. So, but it is working. If Liam puts that password in now and does a speed test, it'll work straight away. So Liam, now we're now going to show you how to scan the code on the bottom so I don't have to give Liam the password. If you open your camera, Liam. Yeah, that's it. Join. So, did you see that join there? there? So basically, all it's done, to be honest, is put the password in. You, you could have skipped that step and do it the old way. Liam always does it the old way, where you go to Wi-Fi connections on your phone, look for it, and put the password in. Because I'm a dinosaur. But, but that's worked as well, hasn't it, Liam? Yeah, yeah, so you can see there, look, TP-Link, and I'm on the Wi-Fi. Do a speed test, see what we get. We, still, we haven't finished yet, we're still going to configure it into access point mode, but... No, no, it's fine. It might have just logged on to a server. Just, right, so stop that. I'm glad he's done that. I think that's conflicting. Watch when I put it into access point mode in a minute. It'll go. Right, so, all right. So, so let's, let's, let's just talk about this properly then, yeah. Right, so... So your upload's same, on it? That's that then? Yeah. I mean, you could be on just a bad server again. Right, so what's, what's happening there? Look, I've got a download speed of 87, whereas before I had 540-something, and the upload is half of what it was. But it is working. If you didn't know what you were doing, you'd probably... Just, Liam would leave that, wouldn't you, Liam? You wouldn't know. You'd well, go, I yeah, I'm on. I'm, I'm on. So let's go put it in access point mode and see what happens there. So I'm opening the app. Um, it does tell you which app to use on the box. I'm going to hit the plus icon. I've not done this for ages, so I might hesitate a bit. I'm going to click wireless router. Uh, I'm just going to click this. Next. Let me just go back actually because I didn't explain that very well. So I'm just going to select a wireless route because I know it's that. I'd, I'd, you could look for the model there and find it. But I'm just going to click the standard routers at the top because in a minute it's going to scan for it anyway and it should find it. I'm going to hit next. Now, on this page here, now look, it's saying I can scan a QR code. So, watch if I click this. This is what Liam basically just did. Flip me over, Liam. We're now going to scan that same code again. And this is, I don't think you have to have it right way, you know. I think you can have it upside down. There you go. If I hit join, right, that's that bit done. So, now that's going to add this router to the app. And then the final step, I'm going to show you how to put it into access point. Then Liam will run that speed test again. And we'll see what happens. Right, so if you come and have a look up here, it's come up now and it's saying it's found the route. So I'm gonna click next, I'm gonna click on it. So this now is telling me to create a local password, but this is for the settings of the router. So you if you're ever gonna come in and set it up, it's for the settings. So I'm gonna put a password in, I'm not gonna show you it. And this is up. So click the next button now. I've just put a password in for the customer. I'm gonna hit next. Dynamic IP, just leave it on dynamic IP, it'll be absolutely fine. So we're going to select dynamic IP, which is like automatic. So it'll automatically set it up when it's done. So we'll just hit next. I'm going to leave do not change MAC address recommended. It's even telling you to recommend that setting. So if we hit next, do you remember when I told you you could change the password on here? So now if I hit use default, no, I'm not going to because it'll show If I you click that, it will use the default password on the bottom of the router. Or this is where now I could put a custom password in to log. You know when you look for your Wi-Fi mm. connection and then you'll find it Office Wi-Fi, you could put a password of in, in of YouTube 2024 now. This is where you do it at this point. I'm just going to click this button next, and probably blur the screen, and use the defaults on the sticker so the customer doesn't get confused. I'm going to hit next. Uh, this is just the time. I'll enable auto update and time. I'm going to hit apply. We're nearly done now. This is just going to restart and then I'm going to set it into access point mode and we're complete. I this does it. take a bit of time. So if you can see now, we've got a 2G and a 5G. So I don't know if you know this, but 2.4G has a much greater range than 5G, but 5G is a much faster speed. So I'm going to connect. It will swap between 2.4 if we lose a connection on 5G. But for now, I'm going to connect to the bottom one, 5G. I'm going to connect. It's going to test my network. We know it's actually going to work because... So it's finished now. And we're practically done. I don't know what that is. So this is the home screen of this app. It's telling me my password. I'm not going to click go. So now I'm going to click this icon up here. 
Uh, no, it's not actually this icon, it's down here somewhere. Here we go, so this icon on the right, what's that say, Dave? I can't read with that. Tools. Tools. So if we click on the tools icon and we come down here, we're looking for a mode called operation mode. Now, if you remember when I said to you, we've got wireless router or we've got access point and at the minute it's set to wireless router. Now it does work, we've just seen it work, but watch this. I'm now going to put it into access point. Hit save, reboot. What's going on now, this is going to reboot. You can see that all the lights have gone off again. It's going to restart, the green light's going to come on the front. The world at the end is going to come on orange. Then it should go green and then we'll come back and we'll show you the speed test again. And that's the setup of this TP link. To be honest, they're all very much similar TP links if you get if you get one that supports access points. But yeah, I'll tell you what you will have to be I'm gonna give you a little tip. Sometimes when it first comes on, if you speed test within a minute, it for some reason it's slower. You just need to give it a couple of minutes if you're gonna do a speed test uh, and then run it. But anyway, just try now Liam now. Liam should be sound with that. See, the, the, the upload, it can vary that. That's not because of your cable. See, it depends. Sometimes it logs onto a different server. But you can see he got 400 and something. But give it a minute and he'll probably run it again. Well, to to be fine. fair, when you, when, you know, if, if you did five speed tests next to you more than in your house, yeah. they're going to bury out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It depends how many people want network. And I, mean, I mean, let me just... I mean, it, it, so there, look, I've got a download of 429 and an upload of 45.2. You've probably just connected to a different server. Uh, Auckland just randomly... Um, this has as well as watch this one, Derby. Do you know what I mean? It, come and look at mine. Look, look. This is my speed test. You might not be, but it might not have logged on at 5G yet. Look, I'm getting the same speed, exactly the same speed. Depends what server it goes to. So you can see, leaving them wires a bit longer, whatever. You're getting this, I'm getting 50 upload and 400 and something. It's because you've got an iPhone 15. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mine quicker than yours. <laughs> so the range varies. If I run the same speed test at the other side of the office, I might only get 320 meg megabytes, megabits a second. It just depends on range. But there you go. That's it, fully set up. The customer can now put the password in and log on wirelessly, or she can use any one of these yellow ports at the back. If you've got an Xbox, plug a cable in there, into Xbox, into TV, whatever. You can still use all the ports on the back if you was wondering, can I only use it in Wi-Fi? No, you can't. You will have a different password. So, because some people might think, well, it's not the same as in my house. It's not, even though it's connected to Virgin, it still has got a separate name and a separate password. That's how this is used. Right, costings. So, if you want to build a garden room, right, then you need to get yourself a build pack because it will save you literally thousands upon thousands of pounds. It will save you more than 50%. And this garden room we've built from the build pack. I've got all the materials down to the last penny and I'm going to tell you how much it costs to build and it has saved more than 50%. And I'll tell you why this garden room would cost you £20,000 to get done by a decent reputable company. Right, so the rods, shoes and saddles, they were £343. Concrete, £247.20. Now that's for a cube. Now you could have saved 50% on that again if you'd have mixed it by hand, but it's a lot of work. The timber pack, £847.27. That is fully itemised in the bill pack. All you need to do is give that to your timber merchants, get a price off them, go to a different one, get another price off them, and you'll save money that way. Again, £847.27. The steel beam that holds the roof that spans the doors. Again, we had to use half of that, but it costs £209 to buy a 7.5 metre length, so we only use half. So if you can get one on Marketplace, you still get cheaper on there. Roof, fascia, soffit, rubber. £646.22. Insulation, the 50mm insulation, that costs £194.04. 100mm insulation, £162.12. Like I said, we've itemised this right down to the last penny so you know exactly how much it costs. Plasterboards, screws, moisture barrier, £229.72. A roll of rock wool, £29.41. The doors and the windows, they're aluminium. We've gone high spec on them. They cost £2,316. The electrical work, that's so that doesn't include the, the connection by the electrical guy, but it includes all the first fixed stuff, all the second fixed stuff. I'm going to show you around that in a minute. £787.32. The plastering, £400. Consumables, now I'm talking breathable membrane, I'm talking screws, I'm talking glues, stuff like that. £368.30. The paint, £65.98, 
flooring, £143.90. The feature wall, which I'll show you in a minute, £240. Skirting and window board, £43.28. The heater, I'll show you that as well. Electric, two kilowatt, £134.80. The modem, £44.99. The metal cladding, which I'll show you on the back, that cost £326.92. And the resilient bar to fix it with, £24. The composite cladding that you're looking at the front and the side there, £664.67. The gutter and the downpipe, £126.91. Now, I don't know why John got that from Northern Building Plastics, but he did. It would have probably cost you about 80 quid at Toll Station. The steps. Now, the steps have cost me, and it's the customer's flags as well. The steps were £397 for various bags of stone, cement, sand, all stuff like that. The TV and the bracket, I got a deal on that last night, £332.68. This garden room cost £8,878.98. Again, £8,878.98. Now, why would that cost you 20 grand if you got a company in? So that's materials alone. Now, they're going to charge a mark upon the materials. They've got wages as well. So two guys' wages, three guys' wages. If, if Davey turns around now, so you've got a skip on site, that's around 300 quid. You've also got a toilet hire as well. And then you've got a van to bring the guys to work and the company has to make a markup. So you're looking at 20,000 pounds for this garden room, which you can make yourself for 8,878 pound, 98 pence, exactly to the penny. Now let's have a walk around it and see what we've got. Right, like I said, it was the customer's flags. Yeah, so I built that little step there. She had a big drop down. I think we were about 300 mil high, weren't we, John, on one side? Again, permitted development, it is under 2.5 high from the highest point of land adjacent to the building, which is approximately here. Yes, yeah, so we've got less than 2.5 high. We've got this cladding here. It's a composite cladding. Let me run through them prices for you again. Composite cladding, £664.97. pence. That includes the soffit board that I put around for the trims because they didn't supply a decent trim with that. If Davey has a look around the back there, metal cladding. The metal cladding was £326.92. That's for the sides you don't see. The elevations that are not seen. We've got gutter and downpipe there as well. Again, £126.91. Right, that's your build, right? It's relatively easy to build. I'm going to show you inside it now. All you've got to do is buy yourself a build pack. Buy yourself a build pack. Watch the videos. Read the build pack. All the materials and build the garden room. Right, let's have a look inside. Laminate flooring, 126 pounds. I think I just said that was in there. Yeah, the heater, it's a two kilowatt. It's got an app on it as well, so you can operate on your phone, and it's got a remote control. And that was 134 pounds 80. John's painted it. Customer supplied the setting plaster colour paint, um, but the white and the skirting board paint stuff like that. It's cost us 65 pound 98. The feature wall. These come 600 wide. They were 50 quid plus that a panel. So there's four of them. That TV, I picked that up last night, £332.68. pence. The sockets, she's gone for brushed stainless steel. We've got a little brushed face plate there, if I just get my fingers in there. There, we've got a HDMI lead that runs up to the back of the TV so that you can plug in your Xbox or whatever you want to plug in there. Nice and tidy. We've got LED halo lighting and all. Another upgrade, but it's a nice little upgrade. We've got four spotlights as well. Again, She's got the modem under there, which we talked about. It's 44 quid off Amazon. Aluminium doors and windows. It's an absolutely fantastic little office. Right, that's it. I've showed you how to build it. I can give you the build pack so you can get all the materials. You watch the videos. You buy the build pack, you watch the videos. All it is, is cutting, measuring, and assembling. And you can have an amazing garden room like this. You save yourself over 50%. We've probably saved 11,000 pounds on this garden room. And you'll have the knowledge that you've built it yourself and it's built right. So build packs are available on my site. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna drop onto another one. We're gonna build exactly the same one in a kit form and we're gonna raffle it off as well. So please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.